what's the best the start of a question i am asked a lot and one you will often find asked a lot in facebook groups or forums a question that means so much yet so little i'm going to be talking about some of the best pop tops mattress toppers insurance one of the most common questions awnings seat beds toilets coffee makers showers paddle boards electrical components camper van conversion companies but you will disagree with me and i want you to tell me what you think because at the end of the day what you think is the most important thing when it comes to most things with camper vans there is no one size fits all solution a balance is required to match each person's individual needs budget tastes and preferences so the question what's the best may not be the full question it may not give the answers that you want in fact some answers could be miles off the answers you were looking for what am i talking about let's take for instance if somebody asks me which is the best camper van i should buy i might say the vw crafter staycation lifestyle special edition with mega spec all the bells and whistles off-road off-grid big engine power a large array of electrical appliances upgraded audio system etc etc however they don't want a big camper van they need a daily driver and they only have a very small budget so the question really isn't which is the best oh and the staycation lifestyle special edition doesn't really exist it would be a good idea though don't you think another real life example of this was whilst i was at a show somebody was asking me which awning i recommended i tried saying it depends on many factors but they pushed me into an answer without actually me knowing any of the criteria i explained that i'd just seen a range of awnings which i really liked and there were a few options within the range anyway 15 minutes later they approached me again and they seemed somewhat disappointed and they said the awning that i'd mentioned was too expensive and too big and did i have any other suggestions i was a little bit shocked really because like i said they did seem a little bit disgruntled but regarding the awning which is best does obviously depend on so many different factors what will it be used for how often will it be used what's the budget and then any preference to air awnings or pole awnings the best for me will be different to you i currently have a massive awning one which i'm going to be selling and getting an alternative one you might have seen that i like the isabella extension awning now you may not have heard of this brand but it's a really premium brand in the caravan world and i've got quite a few of their products already some tables and chairs and even a shoe rack they are not cheap but they're really really high quality and let's be honest here you've probably spent tens of thousands of pounds on your van why wouldn't you pay for a high quality extension and that's what it is it's kind of like having a removable extension on your property your expanded area giving more space more comfort so why wouldn't you get a good one if you're interested in awnings and you do want to know the differences between an urn awning and a polled awning and what could be good and what could not be then do subscribe as i've got a fire pit camper van conversation style video about that coming soon yes that style of video is coming back i do know you like that but let's face it the weather has been pretty dreadful so it's not really been the uh, the weather for that but they're definitely coming back anyway the best pop top is also a question a common question which i also get and one which will get you many different answers people will have their own personal experiences with brands and their own opinions i know some recommend certain products when asked and they are certainly not the best how can a plank of wood for a bed be better than a sprung pop top base it isn't the one you are recommending isn't the best but it's the one that suits you and your budget finding the best for you there are lots of things which you need to look at how does the pop top close do you have to be seven foot tall to reach maybe stand on the front seats and pull it down with all your body weight and then the, find that balance point then pull the canvas in to prevent the damage and then pull it down again or can you simply just pull on the ratchet straps i saw a good test of this at a show when a couple in the later years went round testing the pop top closing mechanisms and there were only two that they could close with ease and one of these was electric the other did have straps and I know that some don't like those, but it was the best for them. And despite them being older and shorter, as am I, they could close it with ease. Test out a few alternatives next time you get chance.
the one they could close easily did also have a sprung folly bed and the scenic canvas. Would that be the best one for me? Well, to be honest with you, it isn't probably far off the one which I would have, but if money would allow, then for me, it'd probably be the full electric one, the full electric from Remo. Now, a similar situation can be occur with the downstairs bed. Arguments had, can be had with owners. Certain brands can be suggested, styles and mechanisms. I personally like the rib bed because you can store things behind it. It's comfortable to travel on and sleep on. Yet yeah, others will swear by other brands and other styles. I like a sliding bed and I could call this my best option, but they do cost for a good one. I'm not keen on some of the cheaper versions, especially since once I actually tripped over one of the raised rails, not ideal. There is a brand new one from Rib, the Smooth Slider, of which there are only two in the world. It really is that one-handed closing operation, and I look forward to seeing that in some new conversions soon. Along with the bed, another common question is the best mattress topper. Now, personally, I cannot tell you which is the best for a couple of reasons. To be honest, I've never needed to test any other products than my choice, so I cannot give an informed comparison. And secondly, we all have different perceptions of comfort. Beds and mattresses are real personal preferences. Some like it really soft and thick, whereas others might like it firmer. So when I say Duvalet sleeping bag with memory foam mattress is the best, it might not be for you, but it is for me. But how can you test all these different products, these beds, mattresses? Well, if you go to clubs, meets, festivals, campouts, go along and have a nosy. You'll get some good ideas, some inspiration, and also meet some good people too. Now, the next one is one I've also got a lot of stick over. What is the best stereo Apple CarPlay? Basically, the infotainment system, the head unit in the van. And I often answer this, well, I always answer this, with the Alpine Halo 11. And the usual response is, that costs too much. And again, you asked for the best. You didn't specify the budget. There are more budget-friendly options, but is the sound quality as good? Does it have the same features, the HDMI input, etc.? If you want a high-end audio device, then it could be worth it. But if you just want something for your sat-nav and aren't too bothered about high-quality audio, then spending that amount of money will not be in your best interests. I like my audio, not just for music, podcasts, audiobooks, which admittedly, the latter two is overkill. But for when I watch TV, film or sport, I can run the audio through the head unit and it sounds absolutely amazing. My focal amp and speaker upgrade is run through my leisure battery and this leads me to the best electrical system, which along with insurance, which I will come on to, can be one of the biggest variances in what is being asked. What is the best electrical system, best battery, best solar panel, or maybe the best portable power station? Ask that question when the only places you will ever stay are on electric hookup, and the only thing you're ever gonna to connect to it, your battery, is a fridge. Then the answer is gonna to be totally different than if you were planning to be off grid for long periods of time, whilst having a fridge, cooker, heating, lighting, and everything else attached to it. It's gonna be completely different it isn't a one size fits all. One best could be 200 quid and another best could be five grand. I like the Victron brand, as do many others, but this isn't for everybody. There are other branded products that are capable also. Like all things, there's always cheaper options and these could suit your requirements and make that brand and that product better for you. Portable power stations are also another electrical question. There are many to choose from, you can have more power and capacity, but it does come at more cost and more weight. If you need something to power devices like hair dryers, coffee machines, then you're gonna need something of a reasonable size. Or for a good coffee, you could get the outing coffee machine, which is absolutely brilliant. And more of that on the future. I have mentioned that already in a previous video. You need to be aware of the battery technology also when considering your electrical options though. Lithium iron phosphate is the more stable, safer technology. But again, this does come at more of a cost than the lithium iron. There are lots of other benefits of this technology also, which I can discuss in a future video, and lots more on that again coming soon. I'm often asked about the best camper van conversion company, and it's a tough question. For a start, I don't know them all, and it also depends what you want. 
what your budget is and all the usual conversion questions of how you will use it, etc. If you want a well-built camper van within all the approvals and the regulation, brand new, unregistered, so you can be the first owner of a motor caravan on the logbook, then an NCC conversion would be my suggestion. Well, actually, it is the only option for the latter. The NCC approved list for VW shows bespoke Bilbo's Hillside and Gerber for 2024. However, if you're looking for a converted panel van, then there are lots of other options, but this is where it gets really tough because not all conversion companies have the same quality of build standards, the same knowledge, or in fact morals, and there can be a huge difference between the products from one converter to another. I couldn't say who is the best as each offers something slightly different. You may have seen in my incredible camper vans video, which has showed some great conversions from the likes of Dirty Weekender, Bowden's Eco Wagon, and Knight's Custom Conversions. All had really high quality components, fixtures and fittings. There was no knock on edging or cheap beds here. Furthermore though, it's not all about full conversions. You may just want an odd job doing, a kitchen unit or solar panel. You probably wouldn't travel too far for that. So it's best to speak to your local community find a local group and ask for recommendations there. Have a look at the work which others have done and make an informed decision as to what suits you. You, the purchaser, the user of the camper van, ensure it meets your usage needs. If it's to be used for camping, ensure it can do exactly how you want. If it's off grid and off road you need for periods away from amenities, there's no point buying a mass produced van with basic components, lowered with a body kit and big wheels you're gonna need something more purpose built. The best is what suits your needs. When buying a van, don't just think you need the common layout because that's what others have. The kitchen in the back with two single seats in the rear may be better, or perhaps a slide pods type addition would be a better option if you don't need that full camper. Some people say it's not got a toilet in it. In fact, there's lots of comments on some of my other videos to this effect. Well, for a start, a lot of conversions do have toilets. They are stored under the bed. No, they don't have a toilet cubicle or a wet room because a transporter is a small van. You could be daily driving it, so you don't want a big van. Will you only ever be staying at full service sites with full amenities? If so, do you even need a toilet anyway? Different tastes and different uses lead to different choices. And that's why there are also lots of other decisions to be made within this lifestyle, like what's the best paddleboard for beginners? I discussed recently outdoor lifestyle provides a huge benefit to our physical and our mental health. The increase in paddleboarding has seen campervan owners buying boards. Now boards vary in size, style and build quality. I've used my Sandbank style board for several years and can highly, highly recommend them. They've got a fantastic warranty to back them up. Is it the best? Well, it is for me. I love the styling and I also love, like I said, that warranty. Plus, as a child, I spent many, many summers windsurfing at Sandbanks, so it felt right for me. Now, Sandbanks have a huge range of boards and I think some great designs. Plus, they've got different model ranges for different purposes. Take a look. I'm looking forward to getting back out of mine when this weather does start to improve because although I'm in shorts, it's still pretty cold. Now, this next question is probably the most asked, which is best question, a question that will be hit with varying views and opinions. Unfortunately though, sometimes this question is asked, which is the cheapest insurance? Is that really the right question to be asking? You have an asset which is worth potentially tens of thousands of pounds and you want the cheapest? Are you not gonna consider the cover, the service or the benefits in the event of a loss, are you going to be out of pocket because you bought cheap and you didn't realize your van was insured for a panel van and not a camper van? You had a claim, but this wasn't covered because you had cooking facilities installed. Nah, that can't be true, it's camper van insurance. Yes, that is actually true from a specialist, but it was cheap. You need to read the documents to ensure that the information is correct and you understand the warranties, the terms, the conditions and the excesses. Did you know that you needed a category five tracker? Did you know that the contents aren't covered? Did you know that the audio equipment is only limited to 500 pounds? The van needs to be garaged when it's at a home address. 
check the quote documents. There is no point telling people I paid 300 pounds for my insurance because you and your van are not the same as somebody else's. Postcodes, driver details, van details, occupations, mileage, usage are all factors and you cannot accurately compare your quote, your details with somebody else's. The best insurance policy is the one that meets your needs and your requirements. If your van is a converted panel van, then I would recommend speaking to a broker. A comparison engine on the internet is unlikely to be able to provide your cover requirements, which you actually need. There are several brokers you can obtain quotes from, some with specialist policy wordings that are written exactly for camper vans and motorhomes. The best is probably not the cheapest, nor is it with most other things. Some of my other bests are the Audi Nano coffee machine I mentioned recently, the best coffee machine on the move. And surprisingly, regarding towels, I recently bought some Dock and Bay, the Julka shower for hot showers. I've not used it yet, but many, many say it's the best. There's lots of other recommended bests out there, but just because they are for me, they might not be for you. I'm gonna be talking about some more of these in a future video because I think the, Na the Outing, the Nano and the Dock and Bay, they, they're all fantastic products, so I will be talking about them more. But my best might not be the same as your best, and that can be seen in these incredible camper vans. I love the unique design of the Dirty Weekender, but I know others don't. What do you think? Have a look here. Take care, and I hope to see you soon.